Hello, this is Ayman, an early stage researcher and team of Palgi project that's funded from the European Union's Horizon 2020 and the Namibia's Clodoesca Korea project. This presentation talks about a very interesting topic related to the narrowband Internet of Things networks. So, it's our pleasure to share with researchers one of our recent published works in the field. This work has been performed in a collaboration with IS Wireless, an advanced wireless communication company in Poland, along with Professor Rodolfo Oliveira at FCT Nova University in Portugal. I hope you find this presentation interesting. Regarding the outlines of my presentation, first I will make a brief introduction about MBIOT networks, their emergence and requirements. Next, I will consider a basic concept in MBIOT network, which is the coverage enhancement. After that, we will consider the system model, network and channel assumptions, SNR characterization, and coverage probability and capacity analysis. Finally, we will show some performance analysis before I conclude. With the tremendous development of IoT, tens of thousands of IoT devices are expected to access the network for data transmission. In fact, the total number of IoT devices has reached 18 billion devices by 2022, which is around 1.8 connection for every person. To cope with this explosion, cellular systems were considered as a potential candidate to provide connectivity to IoT devices. Therefore, the 3GPP introduced in 2016 a new cellular technology standard called Narrowband Internet of Things, or in short, MB-IoT, to provide services through wide area cellular networks. The MBIOT is based on LTE and thus operates in the same license band. It reuses the LTE infrastructure, which allows for easy network installation and reduced cost. The MBIOT network has been designed to achieve the following requirements. High connectivity by supporting 100,000 connection per cell. Low cost and easy installation by reusing the LTE infrastructure and other various techniques. Also, it has been designed to satisfy a long battery life, approximately more than 10 years, by minimizing the energy consumption. And finally, to achieve deep penetration or coverage enhancement to support devices in challenging coverage conditions, which is in fact the main topic of this presentation. A fundamental concept that has been widely used to define the coverage target in wireless communication systems is what we call it the maximal coupling loss. It's defined as the conductive power level that a system can tolerate and still be operable. This definition can be shown in this link budget. It, due to its simplicity, it has been chosen by the 3GPP as a metric to evaluate the coverage enhancement. The MBIOT standards has defined three different coverage classes using the maximal coupling loss. The 144 dB maximum coupling loss for users in good coverage conditions. 155.7 dB maximum coupling loss for users in intermediate coverage conditions. And 164 dB maximum coupling loss for users in challenging coverage conditions. According to the definition of the maximum coupling loss, the maximum coupling loss can be mathematically represented in the following equation, which is basically proportional to the achieved SNR at the receiver side. In the following table, the link budget for the three defined maximum coupling losses has been calculated using the maximum coupling loss formula. We can notice that the maximum coupling loss with 164 dB, which corresponds to the users in bad coverage conditions, has the lowest SNR value at the receiver side. Therefore, the goal of MBIOT networks here becomes to boost the SNR values to a level where the communication can still be supported. In fact, MBIOT has implemented a number of coverage enhancement techniques. The most significant one, the support of repetitions of the most physical signals and channels. To give an example, Considering a one resource unit with two slots, 
and adopting a repetition factor equals to 8. Then, the frame is repeated in the following manner, mainly to increase the SNR and thus guarantee a reliable communication at the receiver side. One basic and important question that needs to be answered when considering repetitions. What is the optimal repetition factor needed for a specific channel conditions or network scenario? When checking the literature, we found that recent results related to the coverage of MB IoT networks are based on deterministic assumptions for the determination of the repetition factor. In ultra dense scenarios, insufficient repetitions may result in low coverage of probability, basically due to poor SNR, which does not depend only on the radio channel conditions, but also on the spatial distribution of the transmitters. On the other hand, redundant repetitions can guarantee for sure a high coverage probability but might unnecessarily impose interference, leading to waste of radio resources and increased energy consumption. This motivated us to the study of the trade-off between MBIoT coverage and capacity in a stochastic way rather than deterministic way, which is inefficient and does not comply with the change in channel and network parameters. The system model we considered to figure out the optimal number of repetition factor is based on characterizing the SNR in both downlink and uplink scenarios. We started by modeling the base stations and user equipments by two independent homogeneous poson point processes, where the probability mass function is given by the following formula. Then, based on the required SNR, which can be computed using the maximum coupling loss formula, we could characterize the SNR for both downlink scenario and uplink scenario to see how much far we are from achieving the required SNR and thus the optimal repetition factor. The denominator in both downlink and uplink represents the received signal power, while the denominator represents the intercell interference plus the noise power. Our goal here is to characterize the SNR in both downlink and uplink scenario. These are some mathematical derivations for the characterization of the SNR. At the left side, we derive the memon generating function of one individual node. At the right side, we have generalized the concept to conclude the moment generating function of the intercell interference plus the noise power. Finally, the moment generating function has been used to compute the moments and then match with the moments of the gamma distribution to represent the characteristics of the interference. Once we have derived the distribution of the SNR, we could easily define the coverage of probability, being the probability that the repeated signal Q is more than a given threshold. In fact, this threshold is nothing but in our case, the required SNR defined for a specific maximum coupling loss or coverage target. Moreover, the capacity can then be defined in terms of the coverage probability using the well known Shunning formula. Since M repeated signals are supposed at the receiver side, Q depends mainly on the adopted processing approach. Therefore, we adopt two approaches. The first one is called SNR combining, where we use chase combining to combine the signals at the receiver side. Therefore, the coverage probability can be formulated as follows. The second one is called SNR maximization, where we assume the absence of any SNR combination at the receiver side, and we simply pick the signal with highest power. Therefore, the received signal power maximization leads to peak coverage with the following formula. In fact, f of pr and f of y are the received signal distribution and the interference distribution respectively, which have been derived in the previous slides. Regarding the simulation results used to validate our model, we have considered two signals. The first one is called the narrow physical downlink shared channel, which dedicates 180 kHz bandwidth to carry the unicast data information in the downlink scenario. In the uplink, we adopted the narrow band physical uplink shared channel signal which carries the user equipment data and control information over various bandwidth options, where we consider 3.7 kHz bandwidth to carry the control information. The MBIoT parameters are shown in table one, 
while the performance evaluation parameters, including the channel model and the network scenario are shown in table two. In this slide, we present the comparison between the simulation results and the theoretical ones derived through the proposed model. The first figure at the left side plots the capacity versus the coverage probability, considering different repetition factors for the narrow band downlink shared channel. On the other hand, the right figure plots the capacity versus the coverage for the narrow band uplink shared channel. The first observation we can notice here is the close matching between the theoretical and simulated curves, which validates the derived expressions. The importance of these curves comes from the trade-off between the capacity for coverage or the coverage for capacity, where better coverage can be achieved at the expense of the capacity, or better capacity can be obtained for devices in good coverage conditions. We could also observe, as expected, that the repetition factor increases peak coverage for a given capacity. The horizontal red lines in both figures represent the maximum achievable capacity for different coverage classes defined by the maximum coupling losses. We could see that the maximum coupling loss equals to 164 dB experiences the lowest capacity values due to bad coverage conditions. Finally, the achievable capacity and coverage probability are lower for the uplink channel compared to the downlink signal, which could be attributed to the lowest power adopted in the uplink and the smaller bandwidth options. In this slide, we have simulated the blur versus number of repetitions for downlink and uplink scenario. At the left side, we have considered different base station densities for downlink scenario while at the right side, we have considered different user equipment densities for the uplink scenario. We can see that the blur decreases with the repetition factors as expected due to the increase in the SNR. Moreover, the blur is significantly higher when adopting higher densities due to increase in the interference. When comparing SNR combining approach with the maximization approach, we could see that SNR combining achieves lower player values. So, in this presentation, we have characterized the trade-off between the coverage and capacity for a specific repetition factor in MBIOT networks. We have considered, through the adopter model and a spatial distribution, their channel propagation randomness, which generalizes the proposed methodology for a wider variety of network scenarios. The performance evaluation for both techniques, SNR maximization and combining, evidences the superiority of SNR combining and the influence of number of repetitions to decrease the block error rate. For more information, please check our recent accepted article in the IEEE communication letters through the provided link. Thank you.